Let's get started. shop folks so in this episode I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can do on your uh, CNC now last fall Bucky came down here from Bucky's customs some of you know him as Bucky some of you know you uh, know him as Dana at any rate he came down here and he, he looked at my clamping system the wedges and he was so impressed he took it back to his shop and incorporated it into his CNC machine now I'm gonna give credit to Bucky because he made a vast improvement on that system with my system get the camera around here so maybe you can see what I'm talking about all right so with my system we use wedges here in the shop my system had this cross board right here that I would screw into these various holes depending on how far I needed to be away from my fence in the bottom let me adjust the camera just a touch you can see my fence is here the cross board is here we would put our stock in make this a little more visual we would put our stock in like so we would put a spacer in here and we would put these wedges in and drive them in on each side and that would pinch that and lock it down not these wedges these are too tall however anytime you have a different piece of stock you've got to pick this thing up unscrew it and move it back and forth depending on the width of your stock now here's where Bucky's improvement came in Bucky cut grooves into his table, his waste board, and he put in um, T-Track. Now, I'm in love with that idea. It's a great idea. The T-Track allows you infinite adjustment back and forth for what I call your clamping bar or your wedge bar. Now, I like the idea of T-Track. I love the idea. I'm not buying T-Track. <laughs> it's too expensive. So what I'm done, I'm done now. What I have done on one half of my board, I've already made the improvement. I have taken a T-slot cutter that cuts wood in my handheld router, and I have generated a T-slot running down the waste board on my CNC. I've already done one side. I'm going to show you how I set up the other side and fast forward so you don't have to watch me turning nuts and bolts and screws, and then I'll show you how I did it. Bear with me while I get it set up. So here is the T-Track that I've cut in my waste board. And that will accept any of your standard T-type type bolts. They'll go through that hole, turn, and then slide. If this was my locking bar, now I have infinite adjustment. I'll put that through, put a little knob on it, and it'll lock it in place. Now what I'm gonna do on this side is I'm going to take this fence that I'm using and I'm screwing this right directly to the waste board as a fence. I'm going to line it up with the outside edge of my waste board. And I'm going to look for a few minutes for my drill. No, here it is. And we're going to, uh, let's put the front one in first. Take my carpenter square against my fence on the bottom just to ensure that I've got it square here. I'm running straight like that. Run this screw in. There, that gives me a nice straight 90 degree line off of that fence. We don't need this anymore. Take what I call an insurance policy, which is a second piece. We're going to put that in, running parallel to the first one. I'm going to take my router. You can see the T-slot cutter is in there. I do a, this in a two-step process with a quarter-inch end mill first, but we can still use this to help me space the runner boards. And I like to take just a piece of paper and put it in between the edge of the fence and the edge of the plate on the router. Run the screw in. I'm probably going to have to make an adjustment, but we'll run the screw in. This down here. So that it's nice and parallel. Good. 
I'll change the bit to a quarter inch. Okay, now here's another little trick I do on my hand router. I take some blue painter's tape and I put it across. That way I can use the calipers and get real close to the bit to get my depth of cut. Now, I'm taking the first pass down to roughly a half an inch. And with this old, um, what's it call it? I guess I can say it, Harbor Freight router, trim router. It's not the gentlest thing to adjust here, but we will do it. So calipers against the bit, roll it up till it just touches the paper. Hard to do this in the camera. I would normally have this face in me. Like that. Lock it down. Then we're gonna come over here and run it right straight through to an arbitrary 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 <laughs> arbitrary distance off of here. Well, we can do it with a tape measure. For those of you that need things exact, we'll start at about six. Oh, 16 millimeters, that's not correct, 16 centimeters, something like here, so that it's straight. I'll turn on the dust collector. I'm go like this, tip this back. Just like that, the two T-slot channels that I can use the improved clamping system that Bucky and I have both generated. questions put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them for you and as always catch you on the next one